Hello and welcome to IB Times TV. I'm Leanna Brinder, Business Editor for the International Business Times. Joining me now is James Cronin, CTO of Vendor. So hi, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Well, we've got an exciting series in IB Times and we're looking at businesses uh, growing abroad. And with some of your clients, you've got some huge clients like Jimmy Choo, Tesco, uh, Superdrugs, and even the BBC on the retail side. And, you know, many people think that as a natural step to grow abroad, it, it'll be pretty easy for them. But what would you say are the misconceptions of any kind of business trying to grow in emerging markets, especially China? Well, we've got some great customers that have the advantage of having internationally recognized brands from the beginning. And the great um, and one of the great things about doing business on the web is you can see where your customers are um, even before you've entered that market so it's very easy to take a decision about which markets to try your offering in um, if you're just running a UK retail site and you see that you're you know you've got some maybe 10% of the, your visits are coming from the US or from Australia or New Zealand which is really common today um, with uh, with uh, English speaking countries overseas then that helps you define what your international um, growth strategy would be um, and a really common way of starting that is simply to start to offer international shipping um, and then maybe move beyond that to specialised price points fixed in local currencies um, as a way of testing that market before you even have to make any type of significant investment either in technology distribution platforms or marketing um, into those countries. So my advice is to test those markets um, and technology allows us to do that at a really low cost, low risk way. Sure. I mean, China is really seen as a beacon for growth, um, even though I suppose it says economically it's going to slow down a little bit over the next year or so. It's still light years ahead in terms of GDP growth and, of course, consumers wanting to buy more stuff. And especially on the retail side, setting up shop over in China and having a Chinese website, um, you know, is a great place for businesses to grow. But in terms of the challenges for places like China, what are those? On the face of it, it does look extremely attractive. It's become the second largest online market, um, second only to the US over the last year. And in the next two years, it will become the largest. So it's, it, on the face of it, it looks extremely attractive, but there are a lot of challenges um, to succeeding in that market. The first one that's maybe um, least obvious and familiar to people who are used to shopping in the way that we do in the West um, is that people very rarely shop through individual separately, you know, separate standalone branded sites. They instead, the consumer in China prefers to shop through large marketplaces such as Taobao. Um, and those, um, and you can invest a lot of money in building your own e-commerce platform in China and, and your customers won't come to you. Interestingly, if you have a separate brand site, um, it's very easy for people to to distrust you and think that you're not reputable and that you might be someone passing off as your brand in that market. So almost everyone who's succeeded in China has done so, at least as a first step, um, by partnering with the marketplace businesses over there. And they handle a lot of the complexities around different payment methods, um, different ways of communicating with the consumer. In China, for instance, it's, it's very unusual um, sometimes for your customers to have email addresses. So if you build a site, which is entirely normal with a checkout where maybe you log in using an account that's your email address and a password, immediately you've put a barrier um, to, to consumers being able to buy from you. It's extremely common that customer service is done and order updates, um, dispatch information, etc. is sent over instant messaging in China. So that's just one example of a way that, um, that commerce is completely different in that market. Well, that's quite interesting because, I mean, there seems to be a few barriers, but, I mean, over, especially since China is very keen to get very well-known Western brands over there, have you found that any of the barriers have actually come down a little? Those barriers are becoming simpler, and now that it's possible to wholly own a business in China, there are still significant um, issues with, uh, or limitations, rather, on removing cash um, from the mainland. I think you can only export about £100,000 a day in terms of takings or profit. So you have to think about building potentially quite a complex corporate structure in order to be able to retail properly um, inside China. A lot of people are testing the market um, by trying Hong Kong first, where some of those regulations and controls um, are different or maybe more relaxed. It's a great way of testing the Chinese consumer's appetite to your product um, in, a, in a market that is similar um, or more similar rather to the West.
Okay, so in terms of um, not just retail wanting to grow abroad, um, people are also looking for jobs overseas because the unemployment rates in the UK and the EU are really unfavourable. Um, so in terms of um, clients like Total Jobs, where they list um, vacancies, are there any incumbent or different kinds of challenges that they face when wanting to grow their offering in China or emerging markets? Um, Total Jobs have a business that's based around uh, creating vertical marketplaces for particular types of industries, employment opportunities and job seekers in those industries. So as the workforce is becoming increasingly mobile, they can take that database of job seekers um, and market that to a new industry or a new brand in another market, especially obviously across the Eurozone where, there, um, where the uh, freedom of movement is enshrined. So they have a lot of opportunity to grow outside of the UK um, at the moment. Okay, so we've been talking about um, pools of opportunities abroad and in emerging markets. China is naturally a good step for businesses. But do you see other areas that could be um, well developed for anyone from retail to information services and so forth? Yeah, absolutely. The first market that people tend to look at is English-speaking countries overseas because then you can leverage what is a significant investment in product copy, descriptions, um, etc., and site content. So people expand to Australia, Canada, New Zealand, South Africa, um, and the US. Um, the biggest challenge there, obviously, um, particularly for clothing retailers, is as soon as you cross um, the equator and start retailing into the southern hemisphere, you need to allow for the fact um, that the seasons are very different and there's no use marketing winter coats um, to people in the middle of the summer um, in uh, South Africa or Australia. Um, a big challenge though can still be the different customs regimes and import export of, um, of goods. I heard a story the other day about um, a customer of ours who were retailing shirts into, um, into the US and you'd think that would be a very easy good to send in through the ports but because of a particular material that was used in the pearlescent buttons on one of the shirts it got classified um, as an animal product and needed to be sent in through the docks that handle the import of and export of fresh fish. Um, so that obviously meant that an entire batch um, of shirts got held up um, in red tape and bureaucracy for months and were unable to be sold in in time for that season. Okay, well thank you very much for joining us today. It's my pleasure. And that was James Cronin, CTO of Vendor.